and welcome back to part three of what if the Namekian Dragon Ball, <laughs> what if the Earth Dragon Balls worked like the Namekian draw Dragon Balls, Dragon Ball Z, what if? Bleh. Not restarting. Uh, I'm sticking with that. I will hold to my guns on that one. Uh, anyway, welcome back to part three. Last time on the Dragon Ball Z, what if? Vegeta and Nappa had come to Earth along with the Raditz looking for revenge. Unfortunately... The Z fighters were there to stop their dastardly deeds. They had, Vegeta had them on the road, so he transformed into the giant Ozaru. But Goku, uh, Bora, and the others were able to overcome him, de uh, detail him, <laughs> detail him, and uh, send him packing. Raditz and Goku reconciled, and uh, the, and a new brotherly bond was forged, at least to a certain degree. There, it's not like he's one of the gang already. He's got some, you know. He's got some making up to do a little bit. Granted, there's plenty of time, all that. Uh, but more importantly, we have the aftermath of this. Now, the aftermath of this includes, but is not limited to, uh, Vegeta heading back into space and the gang being briefed on Frieza by Raditz. And Raditz basically like, yeah, you think Vegeta was strong. Vegeta was strong. Vegeta got nothing on Frieza. Frieza could literally wipe the planet out with a finger. In fact, I've seen him do it. So, uh, so you think Vegeta's strong? Oh, Vegeta's nothing. I mean nothing. He's not even a fraction as strong as, as uh, Frieza is. And that is true. When you really um, break down the level of power Frieza has, even at 10% of his power, he's still almost three times stronger than Vegeta's full power. So yeah, he's Vegeta really isn't even a fraction. And that's in his base form. And we were to hypothetically talk about, uh, use his, one of his stronger forms, because they were aware of the stronger forms of Frieza, at least Vegeta was. So I'd imagine Raditz was too. At least, uh, at least uh, the second form, although he wasn't even as strong, aware of how strong that one was. Then you're talking about a, you know, fraction of a fraction then. He's not even, he's barely 1% of, that, of his power at that point. Um... He's barely 2%, anyway. He's not even 2%. I digress. And so they're asking, well, what are we going to do? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, we could continue to train, but unfortunately, training doesn't really matter at this point because they don't have, they've, they have used uh, up their times in the hyperbolic time chamber at this point. Uh, Goku, Upa, and um, Bora can't go back in there. And I'll be honest, I am forgetting whether or not I had them use the Hypebox Time Chamber prior to this. I think I did. Did I? Uh, I have my notes right here. Let me just check to see if uh, uh, if I did have that. Goku tells them to go. Rad's, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, for the life of me, can't find... No, I don't think I did. I don't... So... The gang can still train to the hyperbolic time chamber, so there is that benefit. But the question simply is, how much can they, how strong can they get in there? Uh, humans do not progress at the same rate as Saiyans due to, A, I think Saiyans just have naturally more potential, and anyone who argues that, you're welcome to argue it, but humans don't have natural transformations. Saiyans do, and that's part of their biology, so more potential just inherently. Plus, they have the advantage of a Zenkai. Uh... But point being is that, well, you know, the humans can train the hyperbolic time chamber, but that doesn't really mean much at their power levels. It's Bora who suggests there's still there is still an option, Goku. What 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 you and the what you did for us with the Dragon Balls, we could return the favor. It's like, wait, what do you mean? You gave us the power to protect our land. Perhaps we if the dragon can do the same for you and this planet. It's like, wait, you mean unlock our potential? I mean, I suppose it's possible. Kami is a yes. We'll gather. Well, I'll send Popo after the Dragon Balls immediately, and so they go for the Dragon Balls. While Popo's doing that, obviously Vegeta does make it to a pl freeze a planet, whatever, and recovers, boosting his power up to the twenty-four thousand it is in the original. But here we're going to change it up just a little bit. Nothing serious, but normally I have Frieza already looking for the Dragon Balls. Here. I don't think that's the case here. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Because there's one or two ways you can go, and they both kind of make sense. Frieza was already looking for them or heard about them through the grapevine. Or he just was, hadn't heard from them because of, uh, you know, very 
Vegeta didn't hear from him in this case. I'm going to go with the latter because I think it's just we were, we'll work with a bit more of a conniving Vegeta in this version. And Vegeta is eventually summoned to Frieza, who has a job for him and his cronies. But he's surprising. Frieza, Vegeta, where are all right, it's Nappa. They're, uh, they're dead, Lord Frieza. Dead? Wait, <laughs> the dead? Y you, you mean Ra Nappa and Rat? I mean, apart from the Zarbon and the Dory, and maybe the Ginyus, there's really no. You're the strongest I have available. There's nothing that should be. There's very few that should be able to stand against you. And you, and even Raditz, Raditz as weak as he is, could still put up more than a fight. What, how did they die exactly, Vegeta? And Vegeta in his head's like, <laughs> I'll either get them. And he says, I'll either get them to kill Frieza for me, or I'll get Frieza to kill them for me. Either way, revenge will be mine. That's it. You see, Lord Frieza, it's, uh, it's like this. And he explains how, turns out, there was once a Saiyan, on one of the outer mud ball, you know, backwater plants called Earth. Earth? No, it's called Earth. Oh, Earth! Earth, yes. I was wondering how that was pronounced. So, you're saying there was warriors strong enough to not only take you on, but kill Nappa and kill the Eratids? Or, see, vice versa. Kill Eratids and Nappa, but actually bring you to the brink of death? But they, why did they let you live? Uh, they... Despite, despite being my enemy, they still had the honor of a Saiyan warrior. So they thought so, uh, the one known as Kakarot wanted to keep me alive for a different confrontation. Oh, well. Interesting. And you're saying... So, uh, you're saying that there's another more Saiyans out there, more warriors? Yes, they could be... They could, in fact, be good recruits. Or they could have even... Posed, uh, they could, or they could uh, try to amount to rebellion against you, Lord Frieza. Mount a rebellion against me. You really think they're strong enough to kill me, Vegeta? Of course not. But it's not whether I think they're strong enough. It's whether they think they're strong enough, Lord Frieza. So which Frieza has pauses. It's like, hmm. Zarbon, the Doria, talk to the, com uh, talk to the captain and set a course for this earth. Yes, Lord Frieza. And in his head, he's like, <laughs> I win. Meanwhile, back on the lookout, they gather the Dragon Balls and Shenron's been summoned. And Goku's a little hesitant. He's like, I don't know, guys. I mean, I don't like taking shortcuts to power. Go Goku, I, I mean, Goku, I understand that. And I mean, if there was another way to go about it, sure, uh, sure. But we're talking about a guy who can literally blow up planets with his finger. We can't afford to have our pride get in the way. Uh, and uh, and Boris said, he's right, Goku. Well, I suppose you're right. Dragon! He watches your wish. Could you possibly do what you did for Bora and Upa and release my hidden potential? Actually, could you do that for all of us? And here I'm going to, like, ch um, well, actually, hold on. First, his potential gets released. And then, is it act actually, could you do that for all, all of us? And the dragon says, I can only do two at a time per wish. Because we did do that for Bora and Upa, and I think that'd be a decent limitation for this dragon to do. Yes, he can do it, and even do it for multiple people, but only two at a time, because that would stress his power quite a bit. And so he just, boo, boo, and fare the well. By the way, like, I think I mentioned it in the second one, but thank you for the people who mentioned to me that the Earth, Namekian dragon's um, uh, recharge time is only 130 days. So they'll be recharged pretty quick. Anyway, their powers are released, and we'll basically fast forward to after the training. After training, preparing for Frieza to show up, um, they uh, Goku would be roughly at two million. Tien because uh, Tien is closer to about um, where do I okay? It's closer to about half a million. Krillin is around four hundred half a million. Yeah, no half a million. Krillin is around four hundred grand. Uh, Yamcha, sadly, is only about at 100, and Chaozu is only at about 220k. This comes from uh, the co a combination of me trying to figure out each potential. The only one we really know is Krillin. We have a legit number for him. Uh, Tien, the question is, would Tien have had more potential than Krillin? Because it's stated Krillin is the strongest human on the planet, but he's also the only one of the humans who had his potential unlocked. So that probably plays a factor towards it. Um... Yeah, and Chaozu, we know, is just, his power isn't, he's not a martial artist, he's a psychic. His powers come more from psychic abilities. As for Tien and Yamcha, I imagine Yamcha probably has the least amount of potential between them. 
Tianmai actually probably has the most potential if you were to unlock it, because he's actually not fully human. The told set third eye thing comes from the fact he's apparently descended from a three-eyed race of aliens. Uh, anyway, so as for the as for the odd man out here, Raditz. Raditz is has been just kind of settling in. He's been temporarily living with uh, the Son family. Chi Chi gives him, you know, gives him a dirty look. Like you are the one to try to kill my husband uh, and try to steal uh, and try to steal my son. I was like, um, well, uh, yes, I'm his brother, and I apologize for that. And he's like, ah, fine. Yeah, uh, I know if you try anything, my husband Goku's gonna be able to put you down, no problem. <laughs> my word, Kakarot. Yeah, I know she's pretty great, right? <laughs> and so he gets so, spends some time getting to know the family. So there's so some bonding with him. Gra Gohan still being a little bit scared, mind you, still is like looks at him like, yeah, I am your uncle Raditz. Uh, you uh, is uh, hello, little ones. Like, uh, hi, <laughs> and so they kind of bond a little bit. Gohan is allowed to train, but unfortunately, Gohan's probably going to be relegated to a side character in this one. The reason Gohan was able to really become something more than what he could have been is because of Piccolo, and we just don't have that here. Although Raz could, in theory, supplement the Piccolo character here, but the problem with that is uh, he'd have to still do the whole training exercise, survival exercise, overcoming his fears, and Chi Chi ain't having that. So, yeah, there's that. Raz also goes and visits, uh, visits uh, with the other Z-Fires from time to time, trying to train with them, get stronger. He um, does end up meeting up with Bulma, and those two all end up hitting it off. Here, Trunks will be the son of Raditz in Bulma, not Vegeta in Bulma. But the t uh, eventually Frieza shows up, and unfortunately for them, it's pretty short time. Like, they have maybe a couple months, <clears throat> which is why their power levels aren't astronomically high. Uh, even with the, say, the um, the Room of Spirit in Time, they're only able to train so much. And so, <clears throat> Frieza lands. Frieza forces show up. Zarbon and Dodoria come out. And Vegeta is is hanging out in the back. And they all, you know, they all meet up there. Which Frieza is very, you know, not quite, but very pompous. Ah, good evening, I so you're the so you're the a young whippersnapper or so so you're the uh, upstart who Vegeta told me so much about. Mm, well, you have, the scout doesn't seem to be reading much, but from what the Vegeta said, you can hide your power levels. That's quite impressive. But tell me, I am always looking for new blood on, in my crew. So tell me, would you like a job? And they're all just like, no, get off our planet. Oh, I see. You seem to think. You, oh, that's unfortunate. But you seem to think you have a choice in the matter. You either get to join my crew or you die. Uh, because I, uh, you see, I am a businessman, and their planets are business. And if you're in the way of my business, you must be removed. And then, of course, he's like, "Wait a minute, Raditz, is that you?" By the by, Raditz probably has gotten a decent degree stronger, but he's still probably the weakest out of everyone, at least right now. As, uh, as like, oh, Vegeta implied you may have died, but it seems that's not the case. Uh, uh, it seems, uh, it looks like he survived, Lord Frieza. I was unaware of this. No, it's fine, Vegeta. It just gives me more opportunities to get to, to discipline. Zarban and Dodoria, would you be so kind as to educate our young, our young friend Raditz here? <clears throat> and so, as for the rest of you, now, which one of them was the strongest? And... He points basically to Bora at the time was the strongest. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. It's like, uh, and Bora's getting ready. But keep in mind, Bora at this point is getting older. His body is going to start slowing down. He's not Roshi who drank from the Fountain of Youth. He doesn't have that ageless physicality. He's he's still human. Uba, unfortunately, isn't also that much stronger either here. Remember, these guys already took their two turns in the Hypebog Time Chamber. They can still get stronger, but... Just like every one of the other humans, they are going to eventually fall back to the wayside. Unfortunately, until the tournament of power happened, the humans kind of became irrelevant to the overall story in terms of fighting the enemy. And so Goku's the one who steps up, and he starts flexing his power a little bit. I see, so you're, def you're definitely not one to mess with. And they're squaring off. And Frieza comes in, but Goku immediately just catches the punch, kicks him around, beats him up. 
Is it good? You're definitely strong, but are you strong enough? Let me show you my, tr let me show you a fraction of my true power. As the fights are going on and they're taking on the gang, uh, the um, uh, Frieza forces as well as Zarbon and Dodoria, basically getting their teeth kicked in. They suddenly feel a spike in power, and Goku's squaring off with him, staring him down. And Frieza transforms, and he's got a power of one million. Unfortunately, Goku's got two million, so he's able to very much overcome him. This is where there's a big difference in the story. Now, as Frieza's still getting his teeth kicked in, he does go into the second form, and this is where they can feel the power increase, so Goku stops messing around. Even if, uh, Bora has basically told him, even if he could give you a good fight, even if you want to fight him as best, you can't always do that. Bora's a warrior. Bora is a guy who will protect his, uh, you know, his village no matter what. There's honor, but there's also common sense. Sometimes you need to sacrifice your honor and pride for common sense. And Bora, being a father and protector of his own home, basically kind of drills that, and drilled that probably into young Goku as they were training, but also before this Frieza guy comes up. If he's as strong and dangerous as they say, if he starts to get too powerful, you cannot let him live. You cannot let that happen. And so, yeah, he just goes like, he can sense the power case, so he just charges up full power, Kamehameha. And as he transforms into his third form, Frieza finally suddenly just sees a blast of energy straight to the face. <laughs> Boom! Just, and Frieza's just standing there, and he's charred. He's <laughs> you blasted say, and then Goku just reappears and just, <laughs> just <laughs> And just Goku's like, and just finally just blast boom and freezes. Kill Goku actually had to be a bit ruthless here. And it's not something Goku's used to, and he is uncomfortable with what he just did to a certain degree. But he does understand that it was something that needed to be done. And so Goku uh, and Goku's just feeling a little off, but he just stares down at the rest of the freeze force, including Free Vegeta, who's just uh, and just he's now it's just giving the looks like get out of here. Uh, and they F off. The few that are alive. Like, a lot of Frieza Force is dead. Zarbon and Dodoria are also dead. Or if they're not, uh, Vegeta kills them after they get on board. And he basically says, yes, we must, as they as they get distance away from Earth, he says, we must pass this down to King Cold. He'll want to know what happened to his son. And so there is a lull period. There's a lull period between the arrival of King Cold and now. And this low period does not coincide with the uh, with the uh, Trunks period, with the Trunks time period. This is actually very different than, uh, than Trunks time period. Because even if, in this version, Trunks is the son of Rads and Bulma, not Vegeta and Bulma, that doesn't change when he shows up. <clears throat> and so, um, and so, King Cold eventually does show up per his words. Now, this is only something I've only done once before, but when he shows up again, but when he shows up, Sea Fire show up again, they've gotten a little stronger. They have nothing. They have nothing. He, King Cold starts to just slide, and he brings the Ginyu Force. They're able to get through the Ginyu Force, no problem. Vegeta has probably gotten a little stronger before, but he's also sitting in the back. King Cold starts cleaving through all of them. Goku's laid out pretty quick. He's not dead, but he's laid out pretty quick. He's uh, no Krillin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right, Goku. Do what you need. And gotcha. No. Upa. And then yeah, and Upa gets killed. I was like, well, this was entertaining to say the least. Uh, is it? Oh, are you going to cry now, Saiyan? Right, it's, it's all right, Kakarot. You'll, you'll avenge us. I know you will. And Goku is just... Uh, and just finally, oh, any last words? And Goku stands up just... Uh, and then finally the power just... Is, uh, and finally Goku snaps and goes Super Saiyan for the first time. And it's not as good as you think it is. I mean, yes, he closed the gap very much, but there is the problem that Goku, even if he's gotten stronger to like the 3 million mark, is only at his Nam Namekian power level. 
Now, it is not, we have no real power level on Mecha Frieza and Cooler and Trunks and Goku when he got back. We only have Goku and Frieza from Namek. Frieza felt he was strong enough to beat Goku after that. But we know Frieza can't sense power levels. He was just gauging it based on the fight he had. Uh, so even if that's true, and can we know King Cold is stronger than Frieza, it doesn't really matter because Trunks was able to kill them and so forth, and relatively easy too. So that leaves us with the realization that even in Super Saiyan form, Goku is not strong enough to beat King Cold. Now that doesn't mean that he's not strong enough to fight King Cold. He immediately comes in, just cracks King Cold in the face. I imagine this is something akin to the fight with Frieza and Goku, whereas Frieza held, uh, Goku held the edge. Frieza, at full power, was able to certainly close the gap for a while. And that's where Goku is, too. Goku's also the better fighter between the two. So it is able to compensate for a little bit of the difference. But King Cold still is starting to overwhelm Goku. But he just keeps pushing Goku's rage and keeps pushing him, pushing him. And Goku is just getting pushed further and further. And his rage is just fueling him. Then he, event to the point where, it's, where King Cold says, not only will I kill you, I will kill everything you love. Not just your friends, but your family. You must have someone you care about. A wife, a son, a daughter, maybe. Uh, I will find them and I will slaughter them all. Every single being on this planet until you feel the, until you know what it means to be, to be, uh, to fear King Cold. And that causes a second snap in Goku. Where Goku, again, because of his rage boost, he's like, no, you! Whoa! And just, bruh! And then finally Goku just cracks him again. This time, just breaks his jaw. Just, oh! Oh, you insolent little Kame! And then he just does the blast. Cold is holding it. Just, oh, you insolent little monkey! Just, Goku just putting every single drop of energy in that he has into this. And he's just blasting full power into cold. And eventually it ends. It's kind of like the uh, the Kaioken and the uh, Kaioken Times 20 versus Frieza, where, you know, Frieza was able to barely stop him, but he did. Not quite the same thing here, as he's not able to fully stop it. But basically, Cold's not killed, but his arms are pretty much just made useless at this point. They're pretty much burned to a crisp. Nerves are dead. Just bone. Everything's just... Oh, you wretched little... And Goku just... He yeah, unfortunately just reverts and like, oh, I swear, I will kill you. And unfortunately, here as well, we have to address something that the Dragon Balls have not been recuperated. Have not recuperated yet. Uh, they are probably, well, actually, I take that back. Because it was probably about a month or two for Frieza to show up. Not a lot of time to train, but still, they had some time. So that's 60-ish days. Here, there was probably a bit more time. Maybe another two or uh, two months or so. So you could make the argument that the Dragon Balls are near ready to be brought back. Or that Kami and the gang had, uh, Kami and Popa had collected them again just to be safe. And basically, they use, the, they are ill. They use the dragon again. He knows uh, King Cole is he's about to kill Goku with his tail because he just his arms and can't do anything. Well, like, what is with the sky? Oh, sky exactly. See the rain coming down to mourn your loss again. It's like, Ugh. and Goku actually not say not quite. And Kami which is return Goku back to full help, full strength. And Goku just Ugh. boom and just suddenly transforms again. It's like, not quite. And just, it's like, what and just. Bruh. <sighs> Take a, uh, and the only thing you can think of for is, uh, you can't kill uh, Cold with the Dragon Balls but he says take away all the power King Cold that this being Cold has it's like, your wish is granted <clears throat> what he feels his power drains like my power what like, goodbye <clears throat> just ah! and King Cold is killed luckily now, unfortunately, there's still a lot of dead bodies around. And so, Goku goes, he visit, when the ship leaves again, Vegeta knows he can't beat Goku as it is. He's actually shocked that he saw the legendary Super Saiyan. And Goku, who's still 
lost in rage. It's like, you know, we because he knows, unlike with the Earth Dragon Balls, where he can just bring him back in mass, here it's a slow process. It's a, I mean, yeah, he can theoretically use them almost three times a year, sometimes three times a year. But he, they're not always accessible, and he can only do one person at a time. So he asks uh, who is the mo probably the most reasonable to bring back this time around. And, you know, it's like, I want I want to bring back Krillin. And yeah, they bring back Krillin. It's like, thanks, buddy. And so now they have to go through the process of bringing people back. And that does take a while. Now, luckily, there was a year's time between the Namek Saga and when Frieza actually came back. <clears throat> And we're not, we are more or less into the part of that year, so there would probably be another two times the Dragon Balls could be used here. Um, so, that said, that means they can bring back Raditz, you can bring back Chaozu, you can bring back Tien, you can, and you can bring back Krillin. So, yeah, and then you can bring back Bora, and you can bring back Upa. So, yes, everyone can be brought back before Trunks ultimately shows up. Which brings us to Trunks ultimately showing up at the spot that's supposed to, where it's supposed to happen. And wondering why... Th well, actually, because we can change things up here, I imagine we can uh, change things up a little bit where Trunks actually shows up to Caps Corp itself. Where Raz is now living with his uh, pregnant wife, Bulma. Yes, she is pregnant with Trunks as of right now, which means this Trunks is a little older. And they see him, and they notice this guy looks... Oh, well, no, he, Trunks isn't around yet. Like, Can we help you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for Goku. What do you need my brother for? Uh, it's like, so this is Dad. Uh, it's like, well, it's a long story. And so, that is where we're going to end part three. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Thoughts, notes, whatever. Let me know in the comments below. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.